Father, this morning we, we shift our gaze from what we're going through. And we shift our gaze from the pit of despair, from the trauma and the tragedy of our lives over the last three years. We shift our gaze from off of the news and off of the situation, off of the mountain, off of the giant, off of the lack, off of, off of the poverty, off of the depression. Father God, we shift our gaze with intentionality this morning and we are focusing upon you. Say, Father. Uh, let's try that again. Say, Father. Father. Grace me to shift my gaze upon the things in heaven. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Say, Father, I receive everything you want to give to me today. Say, Father God, decree and declare Holy Spirit Lord over my life over my mind my will my emotions and my body my body my body is the temple of Holy Spirit my body is not a sanctuary of sickness or an incubator for infirmity my body is the temple of Holy Ghost. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Sometimes you just got to be all Pentecostal and say Holy Ghost. Don't force me to pull my hanky out. He's a good, good father. 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 And I am loved by him. Say, I am a target for his affection. Somebody give me a woo. <laughs> I am a target for the affection of the father the demonstration of the love of the Son in the permeating power of the Holy Spirit every day, every day, and twice on Sunday. Woo. Father God, your Bible says where the Holy Spirit is made, decreed, and declared, Lord, there is liberty. So I thank you for liberty and signs and wonders and miracles this day. I thank you for liberty and signs, wonders, and miracles today signs, wonders, and miracles today. Say, this is the day. Say, this is my divinely, divinely designed day that the Lord has made. Never has there been another day like this day. This is a brand new day. Say, this is my do-over day. Say, this is my until moment. Woo! In the face of critics and doubters and unbelievers, I decree Daniel chapter 7, verse 21. Woo! And 22 over you this morning. I saw the enemy warring against the saints and prevailing against them. Somebody say until. Say this is my until moment. I will encounter the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will encounter the God that laid down his life for me. Today, I saw the saint, I saw the enemy warring against the saints and prevailing against them until the ancient of days came 
and made a judgment in favor of the saints. Say, I receive the judgment of favor today. Woo! Say, I am his most favorable prized possession. Come on, you can say, I am his most favorable prized possession. I am the crowning glory of all of his creation. Until a judgment of favor was made on behalf of the saints of the Most High God. And the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. And at moments in your life, you will apex to a crucible moment. Can you hear the word of the Lord this morning? At moments in your life, you will apex at a crucible moment where it looks like everything is lost. It looks like everything is gone. It looks like the enemy has specifically waged war against me. And it looks impossible. It's the apex of the until moment. It's the pinnacle of your turnaround season. Benita, I decree and declare you're at the apex and the crucible moment where all of the grace of heaven and earth are coming upon you to propel you into greater affluence and influence into the nation of Cuba. I command and demand as an oracle of God today that doors, gates, and windows are opening before you as you go to your place. There is a place. There is a place. There is a place where he has sent ahead the resources. He's opening up gates, doors, and windows of opportunities for you. Get ready, for you shall be propelled. You shall be propelled into your greatest moments. Am I a little loud? Can you hear me out there? If you can hear me, give me a better amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Well, slap somebody high five and say, praise God. This is the day the Lord has made. Come on. And just before you're seated, can you just give God one more hand clap of praise and thank him for all the goodness? Come on now, don't patty cake. Don't patty cake him. How hungry are you? How hungry are you? How thirsty are you? How hungry and how thirsty are you this morning? How hungry are you to to participate in the full maximum potential of your dream? How many people want the maximum potential of every harvest that God ever designed for you to have? Say, that's me. If you don't want your stuff, you can also meet me out at the back with Benita and we will take every blessing you do not want. We'll be, Benita, we'd do that for them, would we not? Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Can you also just thank the worship team again? Thank you, guys. Hallelujah. Well, we bless Kevin and Sherry Dowling, the, the mother and father of this house. I'm excited to be home for two weeks in a row. I just got back from Israel. Hallelujah. I felt, I felt something when I stepped into the tomb where they, they say that Jesus was laid. When I stepped into that tomb, guess what? Guess what? Somebody say, what? He wasn't there. <laughs> Surprise! He, he left eternal presence as a reminder of his goodness. Do you know why he folded up the napkin? His face cloth. The Bible says that when, when 
Peter outran John, and, or John outran Peter, and then impetuous Peter is, I believe, the one that stepped in. And he saw the, the grave clothes lying there. And then they saw the face cloth neatly folded up and separated unto itself. Now, why does the Bible get so detailed about these things? Well, there's a couple of reasons, but one, one of them is when you're in certain uh, environments and customs, when you fold up your napkin and, and, and uh, put it on the plate, it means it is finished. When you put your napkin on the plate, it is finished. He wants, to, he wants you to understand that what he did for you, that you won, you won the war because he won the war for you. He who knew no sin became sin so that you could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus on my worst day. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus on your worst day, making the availability for you to be holy no matter what. Because you're the righteousness of God, because you had this encounter. Can anybody remember the encounter that you got, that you received from God when you got born again? Can, you, can anybody just go back to that moment when you felt a million pounds come off your chest and the weight coming off your shoulder? Can anybody remember that moment when you got born again? How good was that encounter? It was the best. And then, glory Tom. We would have encounters after encounters after encounters. Say, I am a product of God encountering me. I wasn't so good or so desperate that I sought after him. He drew me. He loved me first. I first came into contact because an encounter of his love. I've had other encounters where I was, I grew up on the res and we would have camp meetings and, 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 and sometimes there'd be fire. Uh, and br- <laughs> Those, what do they call them? The, the f- hell, fire and damnation. That's good. It's one way to look at it. Yeah, thankful for all things. But I remember the, the hell being scared out of me and going to the altar and, and saying, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'll never do it again. Sometimes it would last at least two whole weeks before I was smoking dope or out at the whatever. It wasn't last week, relax. <laughs> Yeah, a little clarification is good. We're on video. <clears throat> Streaming live. Welcome, by the way. Oh, and, and also don't forget November 6th, we're coming together as a corporate body of the, of the city, as a family, and we're meeting at Maranatha at 6 p.m., and it's going to be a night of worship and, and just giving glory to God for our city. Our city, we're, we're, not, we're not praying for revival in our city. We're in revival we need to thank him for the goodness of his spirit, his resurrection life that is, that is flowing and bringing unity amongst the pastors in this city. I mean, the last one I went to was a, a little while ago, maybe about a month and a half ago. But when we, there was such, there, it was even to a point where I thought it was covenantal union. The, 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 the pastors that we had in that room and the love and the camaraderie that was in that room. I tell you, it's not like that in every city. We're not fighting for people's sheep. We're, we're not fighting for our position. We're not even putting claims and counterclaims on other people's stuff. We are working together for God to have the glory and that this kingdom of Belleville shall be the kingdom of our God.
Yeah. So, um, I am so glad to be with you guys. It's, um, say we're on a journey. I have not stopped since the end of June, I think. I've been flying all over Canada. And then, of course, you, uh, well, many, many of you know I was just in Israel. And I just want to release uh, right now every blessing that I received, every encounter that I received as an ambassador of this house, as I was sent by you and supported by you and prayed for by you, I release right now. If you sowed a seed of prayer or you sowed a seed of, of, of financial support and, or you just belong to this house, I release right now. Just lift your hands to receive a present. <clears throat> I just release the glory of those encounters <sighs> now in Jesus' name, that you will receive the blessings that I received in Jesus' mighty name. I, I remember one, one night talking about encounters with the Lord. It was a long day of ministry and, and, and being in Jerusalem as a prophet, you're always dodging stones. Guess what's funnier in my head? And um, you just pick up on things. As a, as a prophetic person, you, you pick up on all the turmoil that's going on. So you're constantly in a state of reminding yourself of the goodness of the Lord. And you're constantly in, in, in this uh, subliminal warfare going on. And, and the, the best way to win the war is understand you've won the war. And, and you, can, you can step into your glorious days, no matter what the circumstance or no matter what is happening in your life with the mentality. And you got to train your mind to be transformed into the same as your spirit. Say, my spirit is reformed. My mind is being transformed by the washing of the water of the word so that my body and my spheres of influence will be restored. With the transformation, with the, with the reformation of my spirit, what does reform mean? It's to bring it back up to its original intent and then upgrade. Say, I am the upgrade. With, your, with the reformation of your spirit, the transformation of your mind will bring restoration to everything else. And this comes by way of encounters. Pastor Jeff Johns over the weekend kept going back to the encounter that Paul had that shifted a murderer, a murderer, one that was diabolically against the risen Christ Jesus, the, the one that was trying to put to death again, even the memory of the Christ, trying to snuff out anything and everything. Don't tell me you are too bad to receive the reformation of Christ. Don't tell me you're too bad for your mind to be transformed. Don't tell me you're too bad and you've gone too far. You don't know what you're going to do. You know, this problem is too big. This, this situation, this trauma, all these things. I want to tell you, it's only one encounter away from you being everything God has called you to be. Say, I am one encounter away from my best days. Say, I am one encounter. All I need is one encounter. One moment in his presence. Tom, all I need is one, one word from God. I just need one word, 
One name and one glory. I just need him. I just need. You don't have to be all theologically correct. You don't uh, correct. You don't have to be all all. You don't have to have your hermeneutics and your extra Jesus. Your extra Jesus altogether. You got to have a hungry heart. That's saying enough is enough. I I, I need I need you. Say my hunger. And my thirst changes everything. They that hunger and thirst for righteousness. Say, I hunger and I thirst for righteousness. Is life just so above mediocre? Is life just so above mediocre that you're saying this is good enough? Is your life just better than mediocre? That you are lukewarm and you're you're, you're just you'll just sit in the midst of that and 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 not push into the rest of the story. Say hunger and thirst changes everything. How hungry are you? How thirsty are you to see? the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living and break out of out of your past and break out of your problem, break out of your pain, break out of the trauma. How hungry are you to say, I want the fullness of God? How hungry are you to press in and not stop pressing in until you receive your encounter with God? And I tell you, when you receive your encounter, everything changes. I was, after the long day, of ministry. And, and, and it's like, I forget who said it, but it's so funny. He says, the Lord came to bring meetings and more meetings. In church, we go to a lot of meetings and, and I'm not against meetings, how I make my living. (laughs) But I, I, I need to be on purpose with a purpose. I want to be in the meetings where God is. I want to be in a meeting where people are pulling on the, the fullness, pulling on, 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 on heaven. And so we were in these meetings, and, and it was a long day, and I was, I was sitting on the porch, and I was overlooking uh, Bethlehem. And just to say that, it's pretty cool. And I hear this heavenly music. And I'm like, where is this coming from? And... and I, I, I went down the stairs, I went down, I went around, and I, and I was going to go up this, this climb up this uh, fire escape thing, or whatever it was, and I, I was just, I was desperate to get to that sound that I was hearing. And finally, I, I was just really rude, and, and the lady was talking to her, I think her spouse on the phone, and she's obviously far away from home, and they're talking, and I said, ma'am, ma'am, where's this sound coming from? She says, it's on the, on the sixth floor. It's on the sixth floor. And so I just, I get my stuff and I, and I get in the elevator. I go up to the top and, it, and I'm overlooking Bethlehem and the, and the lights are just so beautiful. And, and I'm way up high. And on the top of it, they have a 24-7 prayer house. And this, this I would find out later, uh, it's an, a team from Indonesia that, pray there, that prayed there every night from 10 till 12. And I just walked up there and I encountered God. Moses was on the side of the hill. He's been running from the Lord for approximately 40 years. You find the scripture in Exodus chapter 3. And he's tending his sheep. He's on Mount Horeb, or some people call Mount Sinai, where he would, several years later, receive the law. On this deserted backside of a desert, taking care and looking for sustenance for his sheep, he notices Something in his peripheral as he's going about his day. 
Say, go into all the world and preach the gospel. See, you're, the emphasis, is, if, you, if you take apart that, that sentence in, in, in structure, it's, the emphasis is not on the go. The emphasis is on the preach. So as you go, preach. As Mike goes into the community as a police officer, that, as you go into the schools as a teacher, as you go into the courtroom as a lawyer, as you go, preach. There are people waiting for you to have already encountered God. Say, I must pre-act in his presence so I don't react in the community. As, as he was looking for sustenance for his sheep, he noticed a, a peripheral. Out, 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 of, out of his eye, he noticed something. And he kind of turned his gaze a little bit. And he saw that there was a bush that was on, on fire, but not being consumed. Say, I am on, on fire, but I'm not being consumed. And he notices it. And the Bible says that he turned aside. What I did in Jerusalem is I turned aside. I turned into... My first point this morning of the four points that I want to make and give to you of how to have encounters of God is that when you see a glimpse of the glory, turn to the side. Turn into it. Say, when I see a sign, I will wonder. We heard so many miracles that happen within Bonita's life. And what did we say? What did we do? What do we do with that? We, we turn into that. When you hear about a miracle, you begin to celebrate. When you hear about somebody getting saved, you begin to celebrate. You turn into it. Say the first thing of encountering God, when he shows me a sign, I'll take a moment to wonder. We're celebrators. We're believers. We're not critics or doubters. Celebrate. Do you remember when Elijah called forth the drought and then he began to prophesy about the rains coming and he told his servant to go out and look and it, he went the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time, the sixth time and saw nothing. Don't let circumstantial evidence in the temporary realm stop you from decreeing and declaring the word of God concerning your life. Even when everything is continually all one, two, three, four, five, six times, it did not look like anything changed. Can you hear me this morning? It did not look like anything changed. But he says, go one more time. Say, I'm going to look one more time. I'm going to look one more time. I'm going to look one more time. When do we stop looking? When we finally see it. Do you want your encounter? Don't stop till you receive it. He's, he sent him out one more time. And it didn't change significantly, but there was a change. When, when, you, don't, when you don't see it exactly the way you thought it should have, could have, or would have, turn into the sign and take a moment to wonder. S say Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving is the hinge that authority swings upon. 
Say Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. Is, the is the hinge. Say thank you, Lord. Come on, just say thank you, Jesus. I thank you for your goodness. Even though I didn't see this, I thank you for your goodness. Even though I'm strapped to the prison and, and my back is beaten, I, I say, thank you, Lord. Even though I'm strapped to, and I'm, I'm shackled to the circumstance, I'm shackled to the trauma, I'm shackled to the past, I'm shackled to this, I still say, I will praise you and I thank you for my salvation. I thank you for my breath. I thank you for creating me. I thank you that I had the revelation of coming into a new creation. I thank you, Lord. Say, Thanksgiving is the hinge that swings the authority of God to open wide into my life. So he, he sees his servant, Elijah's servant, sees the cloud the size of a man's hand. And you know what he said? Gird yourself up for to the torrential downpour is about to happen. You, you've got to turn into the sign and you've got to take a moment to wonder and then all of a sudden is when things begin to open up. I'm sitting in the hospital, laying in the hospital on the very luxurious bed. They were so kind, they kept it so cool in there. And they must have forgot about the bankies. I'm sitting at three in the morning saying, why am I sit here till I die? No, just kidding. Why am I here, Dad? And I just began to release a healing anointing. I said, Father God, heal everyone. Heal. Why, why are you placed in your situation? It says it's so that you can be the light in the midst of the darkness. We don't get upset because of the places that we find ourselves in. I'm not saying I handled everything perfect last night. But you do have a coming to yourself moment. And when you need to remind yourself, this is not my opposition, this is my opportunity. That when I step into any darkness at any moment, somebody is about to encounter light that never would have had I not shown up and had the audacity to believe beyond the pit or valley that I was placed in. Every day when you wake up, you wake up with an A++. You wake up already winning, winning the war. So every battle is not an opposition. Every battle becomes an opportunity to show forth the greatness of God. Every battle that we face. Every, somebody say every battle, every battle that we face is an opportunity to increase in authority. to engage encounters with God. Number one, when you see a sign, begin to wonder. Turn into it. If God is moving, and even in a service, in a certain area, you need to kind of nestle up over into that area, kind of lean into it. You, you, you kind of just, or you just kind of smoothly just go like this. Nobody's noticing. I'm going towards the glory. Nobody can see me. I am so sneaky. <laughs> but lean into, get to the spout where the glory is coming out. Oh. Say, I'm going to get some of that. Come on, I'm going to get some of that. Come on, I'm going to get some of that. Lean in. Position yourself. Number two, position yourself. Number three, reposition yourself. And number four, fight, what's, what is, fight for what is yours. Contend for your encounter. Lean in, position, reposition, and fight. Engage and contend for your encounter because 
one encounter from God changes everything. Seek my face. Psalms 27, 8. Seek my face, inquire for and require my presence as your vital need. How much do we inquire for and seek his presence, his essence? What is more important than the essence and the weightiness and the consecrated, concentrated form of his presence in your life? What is more important? What is more important? What is more important? Do we believe any of this? Or is this just a cultural thing that we do? Because we're Canadians. And, and my, my parents did this, or my grandparents did this. Or. Say, when I see a sign, when I see a miracle, when I see a healing, when I feel the presence, I will wonder. I will take a moment and wonder. You will engage in a portal of his glory. I'm giving you such a key to living a victorious life right now. I hope you get this. When you lean into, when you begin to wonder about the sign, when you begin to take a few minutes and wonder about the miracle, and you begin to take a few moments and wonder about the salvation and summing, someone coming into the kingdom, you actually open up a portal of glory at that moment. I don't have time to go too deep into any of these, but blind Bartimaeus positioned himself where he knew Jesus was coming. And he positioned himself through his hunger and through his thirst. He positioned himself in the midst of his problem and his blindness and everything else. He heard that Jesus was coming, so he positioned himself. And you know the story. He cried out in the midst of his positioning because he was in the right place at the right time with the right people doing the right thing, he became the righteousness of God. When you, when you are at the right place at the right time with the right people, gates, doors, and windows open up. Reposition yourself like Zacchaeus. He was short in stature. He, he had too much too much month and not enough money. He, he was, he was short sighted. He could not see above the crowd. He could not see above the circumstance. He could not see properly to, to have his encounter with Jesus. So he climbed up and you've heard me say this before, the seek him more tree, the sycamore tree. He, he climbed up the seek him more tree. If you want an encounter with God, you got to climb up the seek him more tree. And you got to go out on the branch. You got to go out on the limb. You got to go out on the, on, the, on the branch of faith. We got to take a leap of faith. You got to look. You got to go up higher. If you want an encounter from God, you got to stop pecking in the dirt with all the chickens. And you got to begin to go up and soar with the eagle so you can have a better perspective. And then when he climbed up, he, he repositioned himself in a higher place. And he looked and he saw Jesus. Because when you can see Jesus, Jesus can see you. Say, if I could see Jesus, Jesus can see me. Can I have five more minutes? Just lift your hand. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Every time. So funny every time. You got to contend. You got to contend for your encounters. Jacob would would be sleeping and he would be presented with an opportunity in front of him as a man stood. And it was the angel of the Lord, but the Bible says a man stood there. But it, was, but it would tell us that it was the angel of the Lord. And 
and we and, and many theologians believe that was a Christophany. That was a a moment where Jesus showed up. And he, and he began to wrestle with him. And it would be the place where his name changed, like, like Paul received when he got knocked off his ass and onto his butt. You're welcome. <laughs> that place where everything changes. That place where you encounter. But are you willing to contend for your encounter? Could you stand with me? Jeff, can you come off the fishing boat and go to the piano? No, I didn't think so. We want to pray for Benita. But if there's opportunity, I want to pray for you that I want to contend with you for your encounter this morning. How many people this morning? You got tired. You got tired. You, you, just, you just gave up on a dream. You, you settled. How many people this morning, you've, you, you, you've been believing so long and you, and you, and you decide, I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. I'm going to have to take plan B, C, D, E, maybe Z now. I don't know. But let's contend this morning. Can you position yourself? before the Lord? Can you reposition yourself at a higher thought with a better vision? And can you take a few moments and just begin to wonder at the sign of your life? Father God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your goodness. In the midst of everything that we're going through, we just take a moment and we wonder about you. We take a moment and we say, Father God, we're in awe of you. You've saved me. You've healed me. And you've delivered me. Father, all those manifestations may not look like that right now. But today, Lord God, I choose to believe your word, your promise concerning me. Can you say that with me? Say this morning. I choose to believe your promises concerning me. If that's anybody and you need prayer, this morning for that. And Pastor Kim.